Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, so I have my Blender uh, software open. I've already loaded an object. I'm in the shading tab. I'm going to enable viewport shading and I've already got a principled shader applied. To this, I'm going to add a color ramp. So shift A and search for color ramp. We'll pop that just above the principal shader. We're going to get a mix shader. Put that between the principled and the output and plug the color from the color ramp into the factor. We're then gonna get ourselves another color ramp Plonk it somewhere down here and an emission shader. Plop it in here. Plug the color from the color ramp into the color of the emission shader. Let's just move our mix shader a bit further out. And we're going to plug the emission shader into the mix shader. Now we're going to increase the strength of that to 500 because I'm working in cycles. And the next thing that we're going to add is a bump node. Oops. Plug the normal from that into the normal of the principal shader. Then we're going to need a noise texture. That's going to get plugged into the top color ramp. I'm going to need a second noise texture and that's going to get plugged into the vector of the first noise shader and then we're going to press Control T to get a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. Okay, let's start fiddling about. We are going to start by moving the black of the top color ramp to point, oops, point 0.5. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot, the, sec the first noise texture we're going to plug into the height of the bump node. And that's what gives us this texture. Okay, so for the first noise texture in the row, we're going to change the scale to 1.5, detail to 16, roughness to 0.5, and distortion to 0.1. And you can already see things happening. For the second noise texture, we are going to go for 2.6 on the scale, 16 on the detail, 0.4 on the roughness, and 0.05 on the distortion. Uh, for the principal shader, we're going to increase the metallic setting to 0.25. Decrease specular to 0.35. Leave the roughness as it is, the sheen tint and everything else. Now for this bottom color ramp. Oh, actually that's a fib. I'm going to change the base color to pretty much black on the principal shader. So you can see there we've got our rock that's not molten. Now to change the color here. We're going to change this to uh, red. So we're going to increase the value to one, saturation to one, and we're pretty much in that red zone. And you can already see it fringing the outside of the lava. For the next color, I'm going to increase the saturation to one. And the hue, we're going to move around to a yellowish color. or maybe orangish. We're going to add a third color. We're going to make this much less saturated. The same yellow as before though. 
maybe 0.1, so it's almost white. In fact, no, let's go up a bit, 0.3. And we're going to change the blending mode to HSL and near. And you can see that gives us an amazing orangey red. But if we move the red a bit further in, you can see that we get now much more of this detailed, um, let's say variation in temperature. You know how lava kind of has very hot rock and then cooling rock as it comes towards the edge. That's what we've just achieved. Go us. Uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. Now we could fiddle about a bit. Let's. The more we increase this black, the more we increase the um, available lava. And the closer the white gets, the hotter the lava gets. We can also increase the scale slightly on these uh, noise textures or even decrease it to change where it appears and how it looks. So have a fiddle around and see what you can do with this. I, uh, I'm going to send it off to render now so you can see what it looks like after a thousand samples uh, through. Oh, actually, I've just noticed something. I just need to invert that bump. So we go to the bump node and hit invert and then it gives us the lava rock sticking above. So I'll send that back to render. And there we go, there's the Molten Rock shader for you. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Thank you.